Okay, today we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis antibodies, specifically RF, rheumatoid factor, and anti-CCP, which is anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide, sometimes referred to as CCP antibodies, even though the te technically correct term is anti-CCP. Okay, first of all, what are these things? Rheumatoid factor, um, you to understand this, we have to know that the synovial membrane can have lymphocytes that produce these abnormal IgGs, and these orange abnormal IgGs depicted in this picture here um, triggers the immune system and then the immune system sends out these IgM antibodies that bind to these abnormal IgGs. So an antibody against another antibody and they form an immune complex. Now this immune complex can then activate the complement system and cause uh, joint damage associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Typically it's IgM, but you can also have IgG antibodies involved that bind to the abnormal IgGs as well. But again, more commonly it's IgMs that are what is known as rheumatoid factor. So in terms of anti-CCP, to understand this, we have to know what citrulline is. Citrulline is an amino acid that is formed from arginine. It's part of the nitric oxide cycle. They're important for vasodilation. Um, citrulline, basically um, what happens is to test for these antibodies, uh, you use um, a, um, a bunch of citrulline and it is complex to a protein that in a cyclical pattern, which is why it's known as cyclic citrullinated peptide. So if you have antibodies against those citrullinated peptides in a cyclical fashion, then we will have positive anti-CCP antibodies. And so that is what anti-CCP is, and that's um, the explanation for that. Now, rheumatoid factor is usually the initial test done for rheumatoid arthritis, about 70% sensitive, but it is a little bit more limited in terms of specificity, meaning there can be other conditions that cause the RF to be positive. For example, infections like hep B, hep C, I'm sorry, TB, mono, bacterial endocarditis, and other rheumatological diseases like Sjogren's and scleroderma. And when it comes to the anti-CCP, it's a little bit less sensitive, but much more specific. So about 95% specific, which means those that test positive for anti-CCP almost always have rheumatoid arthritis and not some other disease. So when it comes to anti-CCP, it can be positive before the rheumatoid factor becomes positive, And that those who have this are more likely to have rapid joint damage from the erosions. So to put these two in context, I made this chart between negative and positive. So let's look at the first one here. If both of them are negative, oftentimes we just think, okay, it's no current evidence of rheumatoid arthritis. But about 20% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis may actually have what we call seronegative RA because both of these antibodies are negative. So they're seronegative. So the question is, then how do we know they have rheumatoid arthritis? Well, it's oftentimes by clinical picture and be from imaging studies. So that, those are usually diagnosed by rheumatologists. Now, if you have negative rheumatoid factor and positive anti-CCP, as we said earlier, it could just be early RA because the anti-CCP can pop up first. Uh, on the contrary, the other way can happen as well, which we'll see in the fourth line, but let's move to the third. Now, if both of them are positive, then again, that's a, the most definitive picture of RA. Um, they're more likely to have severe disease because of the anti-CCP. And then, so the fourth line, as I just mentioned, you could have the rheumatoid factor popped up first and then the anti-CCP be negative. That could be an early disease. Or because rheumatoid factors, as we said earlier, is not as specific for rheumatoid arthritis, it could indicate some other disease like hep C or another rheumatological disease. All right.